Building an orchestral template is not a straightforward path. Between key switches, individual articulation tracks, and articulation sets, there are gonna be plenty of pros and cons. In this video, we're gonna discuss these three methods and which one might be right for your template. Hey everyone, my name is Robert Rodriguez and I'm a media composer. If you're new here, I wanna invite you to like this video and subscribe to the channel. My goal is to make the music writing process as easy as possible for any new composer. So this video is part three of my Logic Pro template building series. If you haven't already, go ahead and check out my past few videos in this series. The first one was all about my own template and we kind of break everything down. And in the second video, we kind of go over how to use external MIDI tracks and auxiliary tracks to help you build an effective orchestral template. So like I mentioned before, in this video, we're gonna take a look at the pros and cons of key switches, individual tracks, and articulation sets. It's gonna be important to understand the benefits of each and how these three methods can be applied to your own template. These are the foundations of pretty much what your whole setup is gonna be based on. So key switches are the dedicated keys that let you switch between different articulations. So I pulled up an instrument in contact here. This is the bassoon's articulation and it's custom because I pre-assigned these key switches. So as you can see, for for short eighth notes, I did D6, short quarter notes, E6, short half notes, F6, legato, C6, half step trill, G6, and whole step trill, A6. And if you were to look at the blue keys on the keyboard, that represents the range of the instrument. And then the red keys will represent the key switches themselves. So right now it looks like the C6 is being held down so that means that we're gonna get legato samples. If I were to change the key switch to D6, we see that it comes over here and I can then get short eighth note samples. So in just one track, I have quick access to different articulations. So one of the pros of key switches is really that you can save a whole lot of resources, mainly the number of tracks that you're using. In my other template videos, I really go over the importance of saving your resources. Another major pro is that everything is just in one instance of contact or play or opus or whichever player that you're using. So even though I have a bunch of articulations here, it really comes down to one instrument patch loaded into one instance. So if I wanted to, I could just label this bassoon all articulations, and I would know that this is everything I need from that bassoon. And then if I wanted to, I could add another track, contact, for now we'll just stick with that. Maybe let's go to another wind instrument. Let's try clarinet. Articulations custom. And you'll see that instead of having the key switches up high, I set the key switches down low because the instrument kind of creeps up in the upper range. So it's good to have it on one end or another. The same thing happens, I just do it to D0, E0, F0, C0, G0, A0. So I know C0 is gonna be legato. And so this is the same thing as the bassoon, just a different instrument. I'll name it clarinet all articulations. So if you were to keep doing this for all of your winds and then all of your brass and strings and so on and so on, you would have one track pretty much for your one instrument. And this is probably very similar or as close as you're gonna get in a DAW to reading a single line on a piece of sheet music. So the cons of key switches. Although the tracks themselves don't seem to be too messy because they're all on one line, if we were to dive in a bit closer, the regions can start to get messy. And this is because you need to include a MIDI note 
that represents the key switch. So not only are you including the musical phrase, but you're including data that's needed to trigger the different switches. This can be confusing because one, key switches need to be triggered before the actual note is played. And two, exporting the MIDI data out to be orchestrated and played by actual players can be a real hassle. If you accidentally leave a key switch note in the export data, then a player might get an accidental note at the top end or low end of the register that isn't meant to be there. Now, it's important to note that this is not necessarily a problem if you're working by yourself or you don't plan on sending your music out to an actual musician, but it is something to keep in mind if you are using key switches. So another con is that some long samples might depend on the modulation wheel to change dynamics. And then short notes might depend on the velocity or how hard you hit the key to affect the dynamics. And this can make the region and the automated MIDI data very inconsistent. Next up are individual articulation tracks. So these are kind of the opposite of key switches because each articulation is assigned to its own track. So if we were to create another instrument, I was planning on using one of the Spitfire Strings Professional products. Let's go for Celli. So we will do Legato. We will do maybe short pizzicato, short spiccato, and tremolo. And we'll stop there for now. So we will go to the mixer. This is up to four. And so basically within one instance of contact, you will load up different articulation patches. So one patch here is specifically legato. There's nothing else. I'm not going to switch between keys or articulations in this patch. It is just a legato patch. So MIDI channel one or track one will be Celli legato. Number two is Celli pits. Celli, I believe it was spiccato. And Celli tremolo. So with this method, we see all of the articulations laid out preset ahead of time. And so the pro of using individual articulation tracks is that once you set everything up in your template, especially, then you don't have to really go back into the contact instance. As long as everything is preset, you're gonna know that your articulations sound the way that you want. And unlike with key switches, you don't have to worry necessarily about parameters changing if you're switching from long to short or if your shorts have a more aggressive tone than your longs. If you're looking at your template from afar, you can have a view of what each articulation is doing. You can see exactly where the pizzicatos are because they're on their own track. And you can see exactly where the tremolos are because they're on their own track. Also, if one articulation sounds different or more aggressive than the rest, you can always adjust the parameters in its own region. This helps you balance your template and your instrument to make it sound like it's all one cohesive instrument, as if it were coming out of one track like the key switch. So now the cons of articulation tracks. Even though you can see each articulation on its own track, this can make your template overwhelmingly large, especially if you have multiple articulations for one instrument. Then think about doing that for all of your winds, all of your percussion, all of your brass, all of your strings, whatever it is that you have, the bigger your orchestral template, the more tracks you're gonna use up. So in that case, the best thing you can do for your template is really get in there and organize your tracks into folders, or into sections, or whatever's best to help you just keep it clean. Another thing is that some sample libraries will give you a full key switch patch, and then give you individual articulations as well. So Spitfire is pretty good at this. Like they have an individual articulations folder. So if we just opened up the sample library, we would get the different sections. And then we were looking at Chelly 12. So 
if I were to just load that in. So they do offer a key switch patch as well as individual articulations. And for the most part, sample libraries are good at offering this. However, some sample libraries just won't offer individual articulation patches. So you would essentially have to load in a full key switch patch for every single articulation that you wanna use. And there are of course ways to reduce your RAM usage, your CPU usage, but you're essentially using the same patch multiple times. So articulation sets are very similar to key switches because they rely on the key switch patch. But with the sets, it's almost like logic is working with you to make switching between articulations as easy as possible. So if we were to look at the right hand side over here, we would see articulation set. And Logic actually offers some of their own like studio horns, studio strings. And if you were to load up an orchestral patch of their stock samples, you would be able to load up an articulation set for almost any instrument. So this is a trumpet solo articulation patch that I customized. And what I did was I just preset these key switches to be down at the bottom here. So C is my legato, D is my short eighth note, E is the short quarter note, F is the short half note. And I pre-assigned that to be in the zero range. And in doing so, I created my own articulation set that follows that key switch. So what I did was I created a CineSamples folder. These should be actually be in a wins folder because these are specific to wins, but I created a brass folder. I have a high switch horn solo, high switch horn stopped, and low switches. This should cover anything that is trumpet related. And if I were to go to the articulation tab here, we would see legato, short eighths, staccato, and short half. If I were to just So right now, everything was recorded as simple legato, but the difference between articulation sets and key switches is that I don't have to write in those key switch triggers anymore because I can assign everything by MIDI note. And so after some tweaking and editing, I was able to adjust the articulations inside one region without having to record any low end key switches because the articulation set was doing it for me. So one pro of an articulation set is that once it is set up, you don't have to worry about it again. If you're very organized and you set up a bunch of different folders and different sets themselves, then you just go in and assign it to whatever instrument you're playing and Logic will do the work for you. This way you don't have to remember which key switches which or which range you're supposed to be in. And it doesn't really matter which sample library you're using because as long as you do the work and preset it beforehand, you're all good. And if you wanna streamline your articulation sets, maybe you want all of your horns and your trumpets and just your high end instruments to have the same key switches, you can say legato C, short eighth notes D, short quarter notes E, short half notes F. And if you just wanna stick with those main articulations, you can just assign that one set in here to be something like this, where you have your low switches and your high switches, and all of your switches could be one or another. Or, like I did in the brass section, for example, the high switches horn solo, I wanted to be a very specific articulation set. Also, with regular key switches, the notes are played in a very linear sense. Bar one could be legato and then maybe you add in some staccatos and then bar two could be your half notes um 
but you wouldn't be able to do two articulations at once. And this is because the articulation is based on the key switch. So basically anything between C to D is going to be whatever this articulation is. And that would be legato. So if you wanted a legato and a staccato, in order to get them happening at the same time, you would need a second track altogether. But with articulation sets, the articulation is based on the note. So if we were to have So basically this I still want to be long and this I want to be my short eighths. They can happen at the same time. And now for the cons of articulation sets. At the heart of these sets, you're still relying on a key switch patch. And depending on the sample library, a key switch patch might not be as intuitive or natural as some others. There are some situations where a key switch can kind of be a little finicky or not as natural and maybe individual tracks might be the best route. Another con could be that maybe one trumpet is doing one specific thing and then the other trumpet is doing something totally different. The mod wheel and expression and any other faders that you have is going to affect that one region. Your dynamics, your modulation is gonna be all over the place, so it might be best to then have a separated track. That's probably a very rare and specific sample, but it is something to keep in mind. So I do have some overall thoughts. When it comes to key switches, it can be a real pain to remember which key switch does what and which sample library does what. And so in that sense, it's much easier to just load up an articulation patch, get it onto its own track so that you can just see, all right, this does legato, this does spiccato, pizzicato, tremolo, whatever it is. It's just ready to go on its own track. The only thing is, if we're already building an orchestral template, it kind of pays to do the long and the hard work now so that later you don't have to tweak or edit any settings. This would be the time to preset all of those switches in the back end so that when you're working on an actual project, you don't have to leave your creative workflow. In the past, I've used individual articulation tracks and key switches. I found separated tracks to be extremely useful when I wanted to tweak individual articulations. But having a bunch of articulation tracks for one instrument alone was pretty overwhelming no matter how much I organized my template. So key switches are a great alternative if you're trying to limit the number of tracks that you're using. But then remembering which articulation is which and then adjusting the switches on either end of the register can really take you out of a creative workflow. Personally, I've really been getting into articulation sets because I know that if I take the time now to really set everything up, working with my template in the future will be a breeze. I love being able to just load a patch, pick my articulation set, and then just assign based on the MIDI note. With articulation sets, my entire workstation can stay organized. And once everything is preset like this, I don't have to go back and adjust anything again. But honestly, I think you need to take a look at where you're willing to compromise and how you like to work. Some samples just really work differently from one another. So figuring out a mix of all three methods could really help your template in the long run. But let me know in the comments which method works best for you or maybe which ones you've used in the past. But if you got value today, definitely consider giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new content. And if you're new to composing, I wanna give you access to my free Composer Reference Guide. It covers almost any genre for film and television and breaks it down into four basic foundations, melody, harmony, rhythm, and orchestration. This guide is perfect for any composer looking for an overview of each genre, and it gives you that simple starting point. Go ahead and check the link in the description for access to that free guide. So thanks for stopping by and happy composing. Yeah!